of the Lord. Your labor, your labor is not in vain. Just hang on in there. Hang on in there. My, my, my. Yeah. Hang on in there. Hang on in there. Hang on in there. Reverend Sharita Moon Seawright. I thank them for this opportunity. And we bless them and love them for the work that they're doing for the Lord. We're excited about the work in the fertile ground that our shepherds have laid for us. We're excited about 2016. Anybody excited? There's a change of coming. Hallelujah. I do recognize my husband, Solomon McGrun Montgomery. Hang in there, Solomon. Hang in there. Steadfast, immovable, always abounding. Hallelujah. Just hang on in there. Hallelujah. Hang on in there, Solomon. Hang on in there. Amen. <laughs> there is a word from the Lord on today. Amen. Y'all leave Solomon alone. <laughs> Amen. There is a word from the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Crump. Ain't it good to have Reverend Crump back? <laughs> it's so good to have my brother back. Hallelujah. I knew you were coming back home. I just had to wait and hang on in there. Welcome back, my brother. Amen. God bless you. Amen. A kind spirit. A kind spirit, a kind spirit, amen. And my other brothers and sisters of the cloth, I greet you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for reading our scripture. Let us pray. Most gracious and all-loving God, we do come on today, Lord God, thanking you for what you've done, for what you're doing, and for what you're going to do. Lord God, we ask right now that you just open up ears, open up hearts. Lord God, we thank you for this opportunity. Lord God, somebody came in today, Lord God, broken. Broke down by the cares and concerns of this world. Lord God, we need to hear a fresh word from you. Hide me behind the old rugged cross. Let your Shekinah glory shine, Lord God. Bring peace, Lord God, in the middle of chaos, Lord God. Bring clarity of mind, thought, Lord God. Bring back relationship. Bring back love in the middle of hatred. Lord God, we do thank you. And when it's all said and done, we won't look to the left nor look to the right, but we're going to give you all the glory and all the praise because you are where our help comes from. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen, amen. and amen. If you would... Allow me just a few minutes. Our sermonic topic is finish strong. Finish strong. Finish strong. Amen. Amen. Just let so I can get my bounds together. If you allow me to read Romans, our scripture text this morning, Romans 8th chapter, verse 28. Yeah. And we know that all, say all, all, all things 
work together for good. To them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. If you can, skip on down to verse 35. And the question goes, who can separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or peril, persecution or famine or nakedness or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Anybody ever felt like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my, my. Verse 37. Nay, in all of these we are more than conquerors, more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am, see this gets personal, I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. That's good news right there. Things to come. Nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate me. In spite of all that's coming my way. The word is clear here. In spite of all of that, it ain't going to be able to separate me from the love of God, which is Christ Jesus our Lord. Finish strong. Finish strong. Unfortunately, sometimes we as humans, we always want to know and ask the question, why? Why this? Why that? You know, in the ministry, you know, when we're ministering to folk or we're sitting there, with, they want to know, why did this happen to me? Why? Why am I sick? Why are my children acting up? Why? is my husband or my wife doing this or doing that? Why, why, why? And sometimes we become a little perplexed in trying to answer the question because as you know, we do have the answer. And so we try to come up with some kind of intelligent response. But the reality of the situation is that we can't answer the why. We can't answer the why. We may give you a kind of intelligent, intellect response or something that we might think, but we can't really answer the why. Why do I have cancer? Why is my body filled with cancer? Lord knows we don't know. And sometimes our response should be, I don't know. But what I do know is that God is a healer. And what I do know, what works is prayer changes things. Sometimes it seems that our lives get into more messiness than we can figure out. Just take a minute to think about everything that's happened to you. The good and then the not so good. Just take another minute to think about what could have happened if it had not been for the grace and mercy of God. Right there, you should be shouting or clapping. Beloved, when you begin to understand the deep and deepness of being a child of God, then you begin to, con you begin to concentrate and understand that as a child of God, we are perpetually victorious. Can somebody say perpetually victorious? We can't always see it. We don't always feel it. We don't always live like it. But we are truly, perpetually victorious. Perpetual. Perpetual means a continuous flow. That's some good stuff right there. Perpetual victories equals perpetual blessings. In spite of everything that is happening in your life right now, it is important for you to understand that there are no coincidences in God. Romans 8.28 tells us that all things, all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. Beloved, everything in our lives has been orchestrated by God. Remember, nothing just happens. And until you can wrap your mind about, around this phenomenon, you'll still be asking the question why. What have I done? What didn't I do? Why can't they do it that way? Why is this happening? For about a month or two, I've been feeling a certain kind of way. I came
can't put my finger on it, and I can't name it, but I got this feeling or these couple of feelings all boggled up together, and I don't know what to do with it. I can't describe it, but it seems that the days have been difficult lately, and they seem to be lasting longer than I would like them to. But as challenging as some of my days have been, I still know deep within my core that it is all working for a good reason. And everything, not just something, everything is conspiring for my benefit. I've learned a couple of lessons about trials, tribulations, and disappointments. Lesson one, God is at work in all things. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. Look again at the words of Paul and notice what he does not say. Paul does not say that God is at work in a few things, several things, many things, or even most things. God's work is in all things. All things. Remember that during today and this week. All things. No matter what comes your way, no matter what the devil throws at you, no matter what somebody says, remember it's all things. Lesson two, there is absolutely nothing that escapes God's attention or comes without God's divine care. God gives us strength in every situation. 2 Corinthians 9, 11, and God is able to make all grace abound to you so that in all things, that's that word again, all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in good work. God knows every need we have and graciously supplies all that we need. There is no situation too hard, no time when he forgets, and no problems too great for his grace to help us through it. Lesson number three, Jesus has already defeated the power of trouble with his peace. Let me say that again. Lesson number three, Jesus has already defeated the power of trouble with his peace. John 16, 33, I told you these things so that you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. He already knew that we would have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Jesus gives us security in an insecure world. He's already taken care of all of our troubles. Jesus gives us his calm assurance in the midst of the world's chaos. There is nothing that happens in this life that Jesus has not already overcome. Hey, church, that's good news. That's good news. That's good news right there. I have come to understand and to believe in my deep down sanctified soul that God always takes you to something better, nothing lesser. I've come to understand and believe God always takes you to something better, nothing lesser. God is able. God is always in the business of taking you forward, never backward. He is not in the business of diminishing you. He is in the business of increasing you. Anybody need any increase? Anybody need any increase? Physical increase, spiritual increase, financial increase. Anybody need any increase? Anybody ever had a bill being paid that you didn't know where the money came from? Anybody went into the doctor's office and they, you thought you was going to get a diagnosis and you got another diagnosis? God is able. He doesn't want to divide you. He wants to multiply you. He doesn't want to subtract from you. He wants to add on to you. And whatever God is, he will take you from faith to faith, from glory to glory. The truth is that sometimes when God takes something or somebody out of your life, the enemy will tempt you to think that your life is on a decline. You know how your friends used to hang with homegirl or, or your homie and, and they ain't no longer there? And you wonder what you've done. You haven't done un- anything. God has moved you and shifted you in a different direction. But there is no way your life can be on a decline when you serve an almighty God. So if he pulled you out, if he took you away from something, if he moved something out of your life or moved you away from that thing, 
that is a sign that there is something better coming your way. <laughs> something better coming your way. Let's, sunba let's sunbathe right here in verse 35 through 39 for just a minute. No matter what may come our way, illness, hardship, brokenness, headache, heartache, even death, nothing, nothing can separate us from God's love. In our text, Paul reminds us that we are more than conquerors in spite of how it looks, in spite of how it appears to us, in spite of what we're going through, our circumstances, we are more than conquerors. This phrase, more than conquerors, only appears here in the New Testament. It refers to those who gain a surpassing victory. As our pastors say, they bring it home the gold. It means to be completely victorious, to carry, a we to carry away an overwhelming victory. If we are real with ourselves, the reality is that it is not always how we feel. I'm just saying, sometimes. Sometimes it seems like life can be so overwhelming that you, we just want to take our hands off. But as the choir encouraged our spirit today, just hold on in there. Just hold on in there. The good news is that this is only a temporary feeling. Hold on, because if we take a minute to think about what we've been through and how God moved through us and how he moved those situations, we can just have a shout right there all by ourselves. Just think about how good God has been to you, how he's moved some things out of the way, how he's taken you from the valley to the mountaintop. Good God Almighty. So, beloved, no matter how you slice it, you are a child of God. And if you ain't, you ought to come on and join the family. If you are a child of God, you are already fully equipped for victory, and you're always on call to defeat the enemy. Did you hear what I said? You're already equipped for victory, and you're always on call to defeat the enemy. Luke 10, 19 says, Behold. I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and, all, and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Do you know how much power that is? Do you know how much authority you have? Hey, you can walk. You can walk on serpents. Tell it, come on, devil. Now, I ain't calling you, but if you come on, I'm ready to fight you because I got it. I'm equipped. Hallelujah. I have the power. My Lord, grab a hold of this. Paul tells us that we are more than conquerors, not in some things, in all things. Sadly, some of us have the idea that victory occurs when we are living lives that are full of trouble for you. You ain't got no headache. No heartache, everything is smooth sailing. So you feel that you are living a victorious life. But Paul says that reality has something different. He says we are more than conquerors in spite, in spite of everything that the world and the devil may throw at us. Have you ever had a, let me use, not a gun. Have you ever, um, no, we ain't going to use that gun thing. A sword. <laughs> you never know, ever have a, a sword, and you just walk around. You know, I see the Marines here. This is a good one. I, I see the Marines. They look so fine, my lord. They look fine. Nothing against you, Solomon. You fine too. But those Marines, mm, it's just a few of them, huh? It's just a few of them, and they're walking around in their blues. They looking good, and they have their swords on the side of them, and they know that they're ready. You know, it's just looking good. And they're just using it as they walk in that parade. But I want to tell you, I do believe that if there comes a time when they need to pull that sword out and use it, that they can. That's exactly what I'm saying, church. We are equipped with everything that we need to defeat the enemy, no matter what it looks like. It may be pretty on the outside, but let me tell you, I got something wearing up on the inside. Come on and have it with me. Mm. My Lord, 
Paul goes on to tell us, look at the list of the attacks that we are face every day. Sometimes you can just get up out the bed and stuff start to happen to you. Not one time or two times, but three times ten. My Lord, we are faced every day with tribulation. Tribulation to me means to be squeezed, to feel a pressure. My Lord, distress, that's a narrow place. Hey, can you imagine being squeezed and having to go through a narrow place? My Lord, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, and sword. But we are more than conquerors, not by avoiding these things, but, but triumphing over these things with Jesus Christ. Our pain and our suffering is real, but so is God's purpose. We must remember that his plan for our lives and our plan for our lives is rarely the same. You might think you should be going that way. The Lord has it intended for you to go this way. And you wonder why it's not working on this side. Because the Lord wants you on this side. My Lord. He is doing some great stuff as we go through our trials and tribulation. He is refining our lives. He is remaking our lives. He is realigning our lives to be in accordance with him. This process is very painful, but it is very necessary if he is to be glorified in us. We must remember that God will get more glory from our lives when we are being purified than he will when we are allowed to live lives of ease. One of my girlfriends said, I'm so tired of going through all this. I just wish I could just come home and sit down and it wouldn't be stuff jumping off the wall. I just wish there would just be one day when I could just sit down. And you know the other day she said I had one day and something must be wrong because ain't nothing going on. Everything is happy. I'm sitting here looking at TV and I ain't had no bad news. Ain't nothing going on. See, so we ask the question why. But look at this. When do we pray more? What does the Bi when does the Bible mean most? When are you more likely to seek the Lord? The answer to all of these questions is simple, and yet it's universal. We are more likely to do these things when the heat is on. You're more likely to seek God's word. Oh, let me go to a psalm. I got it. Oh, let me go to a proverb. You're more likely to call on your prayer partner when stuff is going on. That is just reality, and that is why the Lord sends trouble our way. Just as it takes time, heat, and pressure to transform coal into diamonds, it takes the same circumstances to, train, to transform sinners into saints. Got any sinners in the house? I'm amongst all the saints, and that's all right. I'm still asking the Lord to transform me. I have learned that trouble... Troubles are short-term realities. Trouble can lead us to greater blessings. Trouble can give us the proper perspective. Ha, my Lord, I want to tell you that 2 Corinthians 4, 16 says, Therefore, we do not, do not lose heart, though outward we are wasting away, yet inward we are being renewed day by day. For our light's and monetary trouble are achieving for us an internal glory far outweighing them all. So fix your eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Whew, my Lord, as challenging as these past months have been, I've made up my mind to believe that everything is conspiring for my benefit. I dare you to do the same. I dare you. I challenge you to do the same. Shift your mind to no longer wonder if some of the things are helping you and other things are hurting you. Set your mind and your heart to no longer question every little thing and try to attach a meaning to it. Oh, I did this, so this is why it's happening. Oh, she did that, and that's why it's happening. Stop wondering if you're done something crazy to deserve this or any other question that might pop into your mind when something seems to be going 
wrong in your life. Simply choose to keep believing it's all good for me. And somehow I'll make it through. Boop, put a pin in that. No, not somehow. I will make it through with the help of my Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Because all the hard situations you experience will only make you stronger, better, wiser, more compassionate, and more loving. Ain't that what we need? Some wiser folks, some more compassionate folks, some more loving. Hey, let me say, I am it right there. That's the belief you should come to hold. All of this stuff that I'm going through can only make me stronger. If I ain't been through the fire, I won't know how it feels to be heated in there. Woo! Lord, sometimes I want to say, get me out right now, right now. But he said, no, daughter, you can stay in there a little bit longer. You got some stuff that you still need to be working on. Stay right there, right there. Lord, I know better than that. But if you know better than that, why didn't you do better than that? So he keeps me in that situation so I can become a little bit wiser. And Lord knows you know I'm trying to love, right? He said, no, you got to stay right there because your love ain't good enough. You're loving from the flesh and not from the spirit. My Lord. All right, all right, all right, all right. It's some good stuff. And the belief of living a joyous life, regardless of the immediate circumstance. A strong finish. A strong finish is when you know that there is one who is sufficient, and that is God. And your struggling yields to the power. Your defeat is changed to victory. Your misery is transformed into joy. And when you go out, Christ comes in. A strong finish. A strong finish is when you say, I am a part of the fellowship of the unashamed. I have the Holy Ghost power. The die has been cast. I have stepped over the line. The decision has been made. I am a disciple of Christ. I won't look back, let up, slow down, back up, or be still. My past is redeemed. My present makes sense. My future is secure. I'm finished and I'm done with low living, sight walking, small planning, and colorless dreams. Tame visions, mundane talking, cheap living, and dwarf goals. Ha! Strong finish. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice. Hesitate in the presence of the adversary. Negotiate at the table of the enemy. I will not ponder at the pool of popularity. Ha! Ha! Strong finish. My face is set. My goal is in heaven. My road is narrow. My way is rough. My companions are few. Ha! My God is reliable. My mission is clear. I can't be bought, compromised, detoured, lured away, turned back, delude, or delayed. I will no longer, my Lord, strong finish, I will no longer sit at the table with the folk that don't like me and smile like I know that they don't like me. I will no longer I will no longer accept a demotion when I know that I should have a promotion. I will no longer let others say things ungodly about my friends and my fellows. I will speak up. Strong finish. Ha! Ha! I, 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 I won't give up. I won't give up. I won't give up. I won't, I won't, I won't give up. I won't give up. Hey, you know, it might seem kind of funny when you start off and something ain't right. Just like when you're in school and you're in that first semester and all your grades are may not be A's and B's and you might somehow got a C or even a D. And when you came home, your mama pulled your in and said, child, you better straighten up. <laughs> you know, What's that? What's that? What's that? You know what I'm talking about when you came home and your grades wasn't what they supposed to be. But you know your mama said you got two more weeks. So you make up in your mind that you're going to finish strong. <laughs> 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 so you go into that classroom and you 
spit and you watch and you learn what the teacher tells you. And then you go home and you take that book and you say, A plus, A plus, A plus, A. Ooh. A to the four power. Ha, ha. No, you say, no, that ain't right. That ain't right. It's A, B, C. A, B, C. And then after that, it's D. Huh? Or even you look at the arithmetic, one, two, three. Huh? Two and three equals five. One time you would say two and three equals eight. No, nope, it's because you've taken time to study. Hey, anybody want to hear? Anybody in here want to have a strong finish? You want to finish strong? Don't give up. Don't shut up. Don't let up until you have stayed up, stored up, prayed up, paid up, worked for the cause of Christ. As the choir said, hang on in there. Hang on in there. Be immovable. Steadfast. Always. Always. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Your labor won't be in vain. Finish strong. Amen. 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 Finish strong. Yes, the beginning matters. But the end, the end is the crux. Just remember that we need to put all that we do in the hands of Christ. The doors of the church are open right now. There's some concerns. There's some matters and situations in your life. And you know that you haven't done right. Or you've been wobbling and wavering. There's some situations that you need to get right. Now's the opportunity. The doors of the church are open. You can't leave out of here if you don't know Jesus Christ. We're asking right now that you come. If you don't have a church home, no better place than here at Union Bethel. We're not a perfect church, but we're a church striving to be more like Christ. Loving all the way. Then if you need to make a recommitment, just think about your situation. If you need to make a recommitment, we ask right now that you come. Come on and recommit. Don't worry about the person beside you. If you know that you've fallen short, we ask right now that you come. We ask now that you come. Do me a Turn to the person beside you and ask them, are they saved?